And this is for someone who is interested in outdoor business ideas, don't know where to start. I'm gonna give you five here that can really uh, help you. Uh, one, if you're in the outdoor industry, and I'm assuming that you're either a fisherman or a hunter or a mountain climber or a rock climber or a mountain biker or a whatever, and you're sort of in a touristy area, one of the classic outdoors businesses is starting a guide service of some kind. Uh, one of the things I've heard in my fishing videos is say, Damien, man, you'd be a great guide because they see how I teach. And that's part of the reasons why you hire a guide is so that guide can guide you and they're also teaching you. Now, I live in Alabama, fairly rural. You know, it's not like I'm living in, in, it's not like I'm in Alaska. It's not like I'm in Colorado. It's not like I'm in a place where there's a lot of guide service sorts of things. My area is not a very touristy area. It's Alabama, it's mostly agricultural. If you're interested in starting a business of any kind, get on LinkedIn. Facebook, I, I just stay away from Facebook. <laughs> I just don't like the drama, but LinkedIn is like mature professional people. Go there and find guides and just go talk to them. Doesn't matter what kind of business you wanna start, go find someone, three, four, five people who are doing exactly what you're doing, what you aspire to do, and go talk to them. And don't pester them, you know, two, three questions and strike up a conversation. Hey man, I was just thinking about doing this and I, I've seen you've been around a while and what made you get into this? Or hey, what, what's the hardest thing that, have any advice for somebody who's absolutely brand new and doesn't know anything? People like that love to talk about business. If they're really doing something they love, they, it, they just talk about it, it just oozes out of them. It, it should, otherwise, I don't know if I'd wanna to listen to them. Another thing, if you're gonna have a guide service, you gotta make sure that you're a people person. I'm not a people person. I'm very reclusive. I, I Again, I, people think that I love talking and love, no, I'm actually getting a horse and I've only been talking for maybe 10 minutes. If you're a people person, a guide service might be a great business model for you. Another thing is that you can, uh, you can design, and s design and sell your own gear because you've gone out, you've done your own investigating, you've developed your own methods. The biggest problem that I found with designing and selling it is how you're gonna scale it. I can only make these one at a time by hand. So either I gotta charge bukus of money, which nobody would wanna pay for, or I gotta come up with a different way to scale it. First of all, you wanna go ahead and design it and sell it because you need to know if it sells before you start trying to scale it. No need to try to make tens of thousands of these if you can't even sell 10 of them. So, but designing your own tackle, it doesn't matter if it's fishing, bow hunting, Maybe you have a special ski for your long distance skiing. Maybe you have some different thoughts on how to make a uh, ski pole or a hiking pole. Maybe you have some different thoughts. I remember Glenn Van Pesky at, uh, I remember the old G4 packs. Uh, hats off to um, Dixie Mills, who's on the PCT right now. <laughs> uh, she did a live view thing. You ought to check out her channel. It's pretty, pretty good she, when she can get videos up. You know, she's on the trail right now. But uh, again, a lot of those guys out there on the Pacific Crest Trail, have spearheaded this whole ultralight and lightweight backpacking phenomenon. And a lot of those guys like Glenn Van Pesky, who is an engineer, he started sewing these packs back in, I don't know when, the guy had it so you can take your socks and use it as the padding for the straps. And people have bought those packs and hiked thousands and thousands of miles on those packs, you know, or whatever. And he started his own, you know, company, maybe a not-for-profit company. I forget exactly how it goes. I forget the other fella who's now at Six Moon Designs, who's, who's he developed a Brian Frankel, same thing. You just, you know, a long distance hiker who developed his own packs, things like that. Steve Douglas over on the Catfish Dude. Lost a, lost a big honking catfish of his life, he says on one of his videos and designed his own rod holders. And that's what he's selling to these competition, to competition grade catfish rod holders and you see that guy catches catfish i mean he catches some hogs the next category is import and sell your own gear privately labeled brands that's something i do as well i i love it that's probably my favorite way to do business because again i'm a strategic thinker let them worry about the the logistics and the tactical of how to produce it and produce it in mass and then i just go and i can just worry about selling it right mr dobbs my mud motor mud motor kit mudmotorkits.com he and his wife have been importing these things and selling them for a long long time long long time if it wasn't people like him i wouldn't even have an outboard some of the things i import i use in my floats and i do things like that that is a part of what i make so although i design and make my own gear some of the components that i just can't find here in the united states 
I, the only place I see them is made in China, so I just go import them and make them here. They want to do business with me, I want to do business with them. They're getting a better lifestyle. I'm getting a business off the ground. Hey, we're all getting better here. So another thing you can do is you can teach and sell your methods and your techniques, like what I'm doing with the Handliners Handbook. Don't underestimate what you know. That's what uh, Jason Van Orden always sell, says at, at the Internet Business Mastery. You, you have a lifetime of experience doing something. A year ago, I never would have thought I'd be able to make something like this. I didn't even know how to turn on a lathe, yet look at what I'm turning out. Yet, I can take this and teach it to someone else, and I can put a course, a class up on Teachable, and you guys can go and learn from that. Another thing, I know um, what I'm doing here on YouTube is a, this is the bonus materials. Now you can put up tons of videos and you can earn money just through the advertising revenue. I'm looking at the check I'm getting from YouTube <laughs> probably shortly and it's like, oh, that's kind of nice. <laughs> Another thing you can do is adventure sorts of things. You, typically for outdoorsy sorts of things, you had to go try to get funding from National Geographic or something, Or but now you don't have to wait for them. You can just start your own YouTube channel, start your own podcast, start your own blog. You can start teaching your own methods. Start designing and selling your own products. Start importing and selling your own products. Start, you can, you can document your adventures. You can be an outdoor guy. You can start doing all those things on your own. You don't necessarily have to be a part of a big organization. Although you can plug into them, you're not just sort of, you're not necessarily joined at the hip. Uh, if you're interested in more videos like this, just click like. And so check out the website, five ways that you can try to break into having your own outdoors business. And uh, I'll be bringing one one or two videos like this most every week. I'll talk to you guys later.